Hey everyone, welcome back to Transplant Gamer. Uh, my name is Evan. If you don't know, if you're new here, my name is Evan. I had a heart transplant at 12 weeks old. And on this channel, I'm going to be talking about my hospital experiences and gaming. And, and I'm going to do some game collecting and uh, retro game hunting as well on this channel. Um, but for today's video, I want to talk about an experience I had um, in the hospital that stands out to me the most. Um, this experience always pops up in my head. It, it wasn't a fun time in my life, but it does have to do with gaming. And I would just want to show how a lot of people think gaming is a waste of time or, um, you know, stuff like that. And it's actually used in hospitals, video games. I know especially today, um, but even back when I was when I was younger, they were using video games um, for medical reasons. And I want to get into how it was used for myself and how video games helped me through my hospitalizations and my surgeries and my procedures. So when I was five years old, I had post-transplant lymphoma, PTLD, um, which is a, a, a growth for that, that some transplant patients can get after transplant. Um, I had it in my, in, my, in my trach, in my throat. Um, so I had a tracheostomy, which is a trach that you breathe out of. It's a tube, if you can see. Right here, this, this scar going across and this little indent right here, that's where my trach was. So I would breathe through here, through this trach. And uh, let me see if I can, there you go. Here's the scar and there's where the trach was, right there. So I had a trach and I did not, what happened was they went in for a normal uh, biopsy, a normal heart biopsy, um, which is when they go in and take a microscopic piece of your heart and make sure there's no rejection, make sure your body isn't rejecting the transplanted organ. Um, and when they went in there, they found a lymphoma growing around my vocal cords. Um, and they, they, the medicine they used to try to shrink it turns out I was allergic to it and, and they had to intubate me and keep me under for months and when I came to um, I didn't know how to walk I couldn't go to the bathroom by myself I, I couldn't even lift my head I didn't know how to talk I couldn't even move my hands um, it was like I was a baby again. I had to learn to do everything. I had to learn to read. I had to learn to walk. I had to learn just how to lift my head, how to use my fingers, how to hold stuff, um, how, how to sit up. I just had to learn how to sit up and use my muscles to stay up. Um, and, um, and I still was into video games before all this happened. I was a big gamer. And, um, and I, I had a trach in during this. Um, so a lot of the time in the story, I couldn't talk. I, I couldn't use my voice. Um, except for a passing mirror that they would put in my trach, which allowed me to, it, I talked through that. It did something, the air going through and I could, I don't know, I, I don't remember exactly how it worked, but they would plug it into my trach and I could make noises and I guess form them into words. Um, but I, I loved video games and like I said I'm looking down because I have notes I'm reading off so off of but I loved video games and I would try to play and, and it was part of my therapy actually to try to hold the controller in my hands and, and play but that's later in the story eventually but so I would since I couldn't play them, I like to watch people play them. And 
I would have my mom try to play them, you know, Super uh, Super Mario 64. It was a, a lot of Nintendo 64 games. I think I played a lot there in Sega Genesis. Um, and I, I guess my mom told me I would get frustrated because <laughs> she wasn't good at it and she kept failing and wasn't doing it right. Um, and she said that she met a, a, a young kid, maybe 16, 18, um, his name was Chris, and he had a sister who was also sick, a younger sister who was sick, who was down the hall for me, and he would be there visiting her. And just like any boy that age, you know, he sometimes got bored, um, sitting in the hospital room, just sitting there. And so, what started happening is when he would come to visit, he would come to my room and play video games for me. And, and so I would tell him what game I wanted him to play or he would pick and, and I would just sit there and I loved it. It was the best when Chris came into my room, it was the best time. I just got to sit there and watch him play video games and it was, it made me so happy and I loved it. And, um, and I, I just liked, I, I, since I couldn't do it, I loved watching Chris play him. He was really good at him. As, you know, when I was younger, to me, he was, you know, the video game master to me. Um, he was really good at it. And, and eventually they started, like I said, I'm going to get back to, they started using video games as part of my therapy to get my hand-eye coordination going. Because... I also lost hand-eye coordination, so video games actually helped build up my hand-eye coordination and, and get those muscles and reflexes working again. So I remember, I don't remember the exact day, but I remember being so happy when I finally had the muscles to play video games on my own. I didn't have someone, you know, I could play with Chris instead of watching him play. But that was a long time. That didn't just happen like that. That was months and, and, and months and months of finally being able to play video games myself. But during that time, it was nice to have somebody who was also into video games and and would was nice enough to come to my room and play video games so I could watch and of course someone his age his job he wasn't getting paid but he was being asked to go play video games I mean he loved it my mom said you know so a, a teenage boy said hey can you come play video games for my son since he can't play them himself of course he, he got to you know, go play video games for a few hours for so a kid could watch him play. So he also loved, you know, doing it as well. And and being five years old and not being able to do one of the things you loved, like video games, I really wanted, that was one of the things I really wanted to be able to do was to be able to play video games again. And of course, I wanted to be able to walk again. Um, I wanted to get out of that wheelchair and and walk and I wanted to be able to talk again. I want to be able to eat um, You know use my hands to feed myself and It was it was an experience. So I'll, I'll never forget it always pops into my head every once in a while and I just I thought I wanted to show that There is a place for video games. It's not just mindless gaming Video games got me through that hard time during therapy and all the needles and having tubes down my throat and, and a trach and not being able to talk or walk and having IVs and video games got me through that time. It was one of the things that really took my mind off of that really horrible time but there you know there were also 
good parts about being there. I made I made a friend, sadly we lost connection. I lost connection with Chris too, but I had another friend who was also in a wheelchair. When I could lift my head, I got my own wheelchair. So I just want I thought this video could talk about how video games can help if used correctly. They can help with hand-eye coordination and you know rebuilding the muscles in your hands and your fingers to be able to push those buttons use the joystick use the triggers just hold the controller they used to have to i'll show you this um so let's just say this is a pillow and i'm sitting in a hospital bed well not say this is a pillow but let's say this pillow's in my lap they used to have to put maybe two or three pillows in my lap and then prop my arms up on the pillows just so I can hold the controllers. And so I would have maybe one, two, or three pillows so I could prop up my hands and my arms to hold the controller the right way to be able to play. And then also I had to think about you know, how to move my fingers, how to use my fingers after they propped up my hands to be able to hold the controller. So that was part of my therapy. Video games, and especially like I said, the Nintendo 64, was a huge part of my therapy. To be able to do that again, use my hands and my fingers and my hand-eye coordination and, and get that up and going it build back the, the muscles in my fingers and my hands and my wrists and it's just it that's just a time in my life i'll never forget it, it runs through my mind i mean it'll just you know i'll just be sitting there and this will just randomly pop up in my head like hey remember this so video games have always been a part a big part of my life they, like I said, as you just heard, they helped me through hard times. And they do have a purpose besides mindless, what people say, mind-numbing gaming. They can be used as a therapeutic method, which I know they are using now. I know they're using VR to help burn patients you know do um ice you know a snow game in vr for burn patients and stuff like that but that's that's my experience of uh video games in the hospital and they they did help a lot through what i was going through and if you guys would like to hear more of my medical stories they might not necessarily have to do with video games but the whole point of this channel is, yes, gaming is a huge part. Game collecting, game hunting, um, retro game hunting and retro game collecting is a huge part of this channel. But also, I wanted to do this channel to be able to tell medical stories of what I've been through. If you guys are happen to be interested Um in my medical stories and my medical experiences that I've been through. Hit the like button if you like this video. Comment below if you would like to hear some more of my medical stories and what I've been through. Of course, this will always be a gaming channel. We're still going to be doing retro game hunting, game collecting, and, and, and all that stuff. That is the main point of this channel. But also, I want to talk about how video games have helped me through hard medical times, uh, surgeries, hospitalizations. And I might even talk about um, surgeries and medical procedures and hospitalizations I've been through. And the stories don't have anything to do with gaming, if you guys are up for that. Uh, comment below if you would like to hear some non-gaming medical stories that I've been through but this will always be always be a gaming channel that is not going to change so 
thank you guys for watching so much and um, I'm really excited this is my second video on the channel and I'm really excited to to start this channel with everybody and if you'd like to join the transplant gamer channel just hit the subscribe button hit that notification bell so you get notified of new uploads and join the transplant gamer community i'm really excited and i'm excited to go on this adventure of game collecting and storytelling with you guys so again thanks for watching please comment rate and subscribe hit that notification bell to turn on notifications and welcome to the Transplant Gamer channel. My name is Evan, and I'll talk to you guys again soon. Thank you. Bye.